Good morning everybody and you're all very welcome to our service of morning prayer on this the first Sunday of Christmas. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas day and that you're now relaxing and uh, putting your feet up and staying safe of course. Here we are again recording because the church is closed for two weeks. Uh, next Sunday will be our uh, first Sunday of the month, the first Sunday of the new year and that will be our family service so you're all very welcome to join us next week also. Our service of morning prayer begins on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 101. The Lord be with you and also with you. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. The sentence of scripture is from Luke chapter 2. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. We pray together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, for what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. You'll find the psalm set for this morning on page 764. Page 764. It's Psalm number 148. And we say this psalm together. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all you his angels. Praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you stars of light. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He made them fast for ever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, Tempestuous wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, 
creeping things and birds on the wing, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and women, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name only is exalted, his splendor above earth and heaven. He has raised up the horn of his people and praise for all his faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Our reading for this first Sunday of Christmas from Luke chapter 2 verses 15 to 21. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child dying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words from my lips and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I wonder what I would have heard had I been there that night. It's a question that I ask myself every year. Would I have heard the choirs of angels singing or simply the sounds of barnyard animals shifting around? Would I have seen the star in the sky that night or simply two poor and very frightened children? Would I have felt the hushed silence of the divine presence or simply the chill of a cold east wind. Would I have understood the message of Emmanuel, God with us? Or would the cosmic implications of that evening have passed me by? I am convinced that had two people been there that night in Bethlehem, it's quite possible that they could have heard and seen two entirely different scenes. I believe this because all of life is this way. God never reveals himself in such a way that we are forced to believe. We are always left with an option. For that is God's way. And because God presents himself this way, one person can say, it's a miracle, while another says, it's a coincidence. Certainly very few people in Palestine saw and heard and understood what took place that night. The choirs of the angels singing were drowned out by the haggling and trading going on in a Jerusalem bazaar. There was a bright star in the sky, 
But the only ones apparently to pay any attention to it were the pagan astrologers from the east. If anyone did see Mary and Joseph on that most fateful night, they were too preoccupied with their own problems to offer any assistance. A popular play and movie this time of year, one I always enjoy watching, even if it is The Muppets, is A Christmas Carol. There's one scene that has always fascinated me. The ghost of Christmas past has just paid a very discomforting visit to Ebenezer Scrooge. Clearly, the old miser is shaken by the entire ordeal. But when he awakens from his sleep, does he take the message to heart? No, he simply dismisses it by saying, Bah, humbug, it wasn't real. Just a bit of last night's undigested beef, he says to himself. There's more gravy about you than grave. A vision to be taken to heart or simple indigestion, you tell me. Oh, you say, had I been there at Bethlehem that night, I would have seen, I would have understood, I would have known it was the Christ child. Would you? There's one way of knowing. When you watched the news, did you see the chaos and strife? All the updates about coronavirus? How many people had died that day? Or did you see sheep without a shepherd? When you went out to do your shopping before Christmas, did you see only hordes of people in the shops Nowhere to park, people trying to keep their distance, sometimes unsuccessfully. Or did you notice the worried expressions on some of their faces? Worried because they were facing this Christmas without employment or enough money, distance from their close relatives and friends and they don't know how they're going to make ends meet. What did you hear this Christmas? Did you hear only the blast of music and carols? Or did you hear the silent sighs of the lonely and the bereaved who may be dreading Christmas because it accentuates their loneliness? And in the midst of honking horns and the busy traffic and people arguing over parking, did you hear the, the faint sounds of St Dorothea's recording for our beautiful carol service? You see, so often what you see and what you hear is not dependent upon the event, but upon you. If you did in fact hear the cry from the lonely, the laughter of poor children, if you saw the sheep without a shepherd, then and only then might you have noticed the events that took place in Bethlehem. If you lacked that spiritual seeing and hearing, then you probably would have been with the 99% who were present, but who saw or heard nothing out of the ordinary. In the end, perhaps one of our carols words it best. 
No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. On page 112, we join together in proclaiming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is a reminder. Thy kingdom of the come, day. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, Question as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the First Sunday of Christmas. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, give joy to the world, joy in our hearts, joy in our homes. Let the joy of God be known among us. For your love revealed in your manger birth, we join with the shepherds to glorify and praise you. Through him who came to live among us, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us say the first collect of morning prayer on page 114, O God. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life 
and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we greatly rejoice in your presence among us. We come to bow with the shepherds, to kneel with the wise men, to adore with Joseph, to hold you in our hearts with Mary. Let your church proclaim your glory and your love. We pray for all shepherds of your flock, remembering especially Bishop David, Canon Walter, and our parish readers, Margaret, Wendy, and Petrina. For all who go out on mission, for all involved in outreach, may we reveal you as the light to lighten all peoples. Light who lightens all, shine in our lives. Lord, we remember with sadness the divisions of our world, a world not at peace where people are misused and often scorned. We remember the places of war and violence. Lord, may the nations come to know that peace which only you can give. We pray that we learn to live together in harmony and fellowship. Light who lightens all, shine in our lives. Lord, we give thanks for family life especially in this Christmas time, for our homes and for those who have cared for us. We pray for children that are not wanted or who are denied love, for all children taken into care, for the abandoned, the abused, the ill-treated. We give thanks for all who have cared for us. Light who lightens all, shine in our lives. Lord, we remember all who are lonely this Christmas, all who are troubled or sad, all who are suffering from COVID-19, all those who have to isolate during this lockdown, all who are unable to enter into the fullness of joy through sickness or bereavement. We pray for parents anxious about their children. We pray for a new year which is just around the corner. We pray that you will shed your light upon it, Lord, and bless it. We remember all who are in the shadow of the fear of death. Light who lightens all. Shine in our lives. Lord, we remember all who have entered into joy and peace in the glory of your kingdom. May they rejoice in your presence and your love. Light who lightens all, shine in our hearts. As an act of fellowship, let us join together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And may the God of hope fill you and fill all of us with joy and peace in believing so that the Holy Spirit may abound in us in hope. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me in this service. It's really encouraging when you see how many people are watching and uh, how many people have liked the service. Thanks also to Richard for taking what I have done and putting it on the parish website and also on Facebook. Thanks to Richard again. I'd just like to wish you all a very happy new year. I hope and pray that it's a much healthier one than this year has been. So let's look forward in Jesus name to 2021. So God bless you all and uh, I'll see you next Sunday if you can possibly join me for the family service. God bless everybody. Bye bye.